Hello everyone, I'm Ethan, the founder of Outcast Games, and in this episode of Bite Sized UE5, we'll be talking about the new World Partition system. Before World Partition in Unreal Engine 5, we had World Composition in Unreal Engine 4, and World Composition was quite useful. It would allow you to essentially separate one large world out into many levels and dynamically stream those levels in. Well, at least that's how it appeared. Really, it was streaming you into the other levels. And that brought with it lots of limitations. It was troublesome to work with with source control. It was troublesome with multiplayer. And it was all in all challenging to work with. So with Unreal Engine 5, Epic made the new world partition system. And instead of streaming you into different level files and keeping everything separate, a single level is split into a whole lot of small sections that can be loaded in and unloaded on the fly. Very similar to how Minecraft works with chunks. To enable world partition, go to your project settings, search world partition, and click the checkbox under Enable World Partition right here. And to activate World Partition for a level, you need to create a new level. And I think that is a bug with Unreal Engine 5 that should be fixed at some point. But if you create that level after enabling World Partition, World Partition is enabled. Each actor has World Partition settings associated with it. To access them, click on an actor and scroll down in the details panel and you'll reach a World Partition settings section right here. And here you can change the grid placement type. With bounds, the actor uses its bounds to determine in which runtime cells it's going to be placed. For location, the actor uses its location to determine in which runtime cells it's going to be placed. And for always loaded, the actor is always loaded and doesn't get unloaded and loaded with world partition cells. One big advantage that the world partition system has is that you don't need to check out levels anymore when working on a team with source control. As long as one file per actor is enabled, a bunch of developers can be in the same level moving things around, placing things in, and they can all be doing it together easily and because the level isn't holding that information anymore. The actor files are. And that brings us to one file per actor. What is it? Why? How? Well, one file per actor is essentially literally one file per actor. Before, things like actor transforms were stored in the level blueprint. If you put an actor somewhere in the level, a static mesh somewhere in the level, anything anywhere in the level, it would just, well, be part of the level file. And it would be saved as a level file. And that's created problems when working in teams because now if someone wants to edit the position of just one actor, the whole thing needs to be checked out. And it also created problems in memory as well, because you load in the level and you're loading in, it's just harder to optimize what you're loading in. And with one file per actor, although it takes up some more space on disk, not much. One level can be edited together by a whole bunch of people, and it's easier to optimize memory usage, because now you can just load actor files into memory when you need them and you're not trying to uncouple them from level files or do any of that stuff so it's a simpler process in the background for a lot of things that the engine does which will should help increase performance and it's simpler to work with one file per actor is automatically enabled in any level with world partition turned on to enable it for a single actor inside of a level where world partition isn't being used, select that actor and scroll down in the details panel until you get to the actor settings. If they are collapsed like this, just hit this arrow down here 
and change the packaging mode from internal to external. To enable one file per actor for all actors in the level, go to world settings and search use external actors. And you'll find this setting here. Tick the box and select yes. And now one file per actor is enabled for all actors in the level. Because world partition partitions are streamed in and streamed out on the fly, there needs to be something telling the engine to stream in or stream out a partition, and that is where streaming sources come into play. Streaming sources are actors that the Unreal Engine will stream in world partition partitions around. A player is a streaming source by default, but you can create other streaming sources as well. To access settings for world partition as a whole, go to world settings, search world partition, and then expand these tabs to get to the settings. There are settings for the grid name, the cell size, and the loading range, which determines the range from a streaming source where the grid will be loaded, as well as the debug color. The debug color option determines the color of the grid lines when preview grids is enabled. If I click that here, here we can see all the different grids in this level that I threw together for this video, super simple level. And then we can just change that debug color around however we want to, like that. So with world partitions, all cells are initially unloaded. And that is because things are streamed in around our sources and it saves memory. You don't want to automatically load all the cells in some huge, massive world as soon as you open it and blow up your computer. To load and unload cells inside of Unreal Engine 5, go to Window, World Partition, click and drag to select cells, right click, and then you can load selected cells or unload selected cells. World Partition also makes use of HLODs or hierarchical levels of detail, meaning that entire chunks, entire partitions can have levels of detail so that the partition you're in can be loaded and the partitions around it can be loaded at a lower level of detail. Similar to how regular static mesh levels of detail work when Nanite isn't enabled. To use HLODs with a world partition level, open up the content drawer, click add, go to miscellaneous, and then create an HLOD layer. Open this layer up, and there are various settings for the type of layer, such as instancing, merged mesh, and simplified mesh. You can tell the layer to always be loaded. You can set the cell size, the loading range, parent layer. For in-depth information on all of these, go visit the HLOD documentation for Unreal Engine 5 linked in the description. But now that we have an HLOD layer created here, I'm not going to go deeply into the settings right now to keep the video at a reasonable length. We can, let's get an actor into this level. Let's just grab this table. And then go to the actor's details panel and just type in HLOD, HLOD. And you'll find the HLOD layer settings. Here we can select the HLOD layer. And now this actor is using the HLOD layer that we created. And finally, we have data layers. And they are a simple way of just organizing and streaming in and out contents that you don't always need. So you can take some of your assets in a level and put them in one layer, some of your assets in another layer, and then you can dynamically stream those layers in and out as you need them so that not everything is kept in memory at the same time. A great example of this is the Dark World in the Valley of the Ancients demo released by Epic Games 
with the launch of Unreal Engine 5 Early Access. To make use of data layers in your level, go to Window, Data Layers, if I can find it, here we go. And we can right click and create an empty data layer. You can create multiples, you can select them and press F2 if you want to rename them to something. And then to add an actor to a data layer, select your actor, and then go to its details panel and just search up data layers. You can then add an array element and you can set the data layer for the actor. We can set this data layer to our something data layer. And then if we disable this layer, the table disappears. We enable it and the table reappears. But it's doing more than disappearing and reappearing. It's being loaded and unloaded to and from the level. And I think that is everything. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And I'll see you in the next episode of Bite-Sized UE5.